Good morning. Um, so where were we yesterday? Uh, yesterday, um, I'd hit a bit of a snag. Um, I'd found that I couldn't implement the SQL mock go library to test my um, database backed go API um, so easily because um, I am using a um, PGX pool uh, library for connecting to the Postgres style database, which is actually CockroachDB. Um, and the SQL mock uh, library um, only works with um, variations on the standard database uh, SQL library. Um, so I was left with homework um, to go for search if there was any way to uh, use PGX pool or what else I could do um, to maybe carry on using this SQL mock. Um, and what I ended up doing was um, just switching back to the, to the standard uh, database SQL driver setup with um, the PGX standard lib driver. Um, so basically I could still use uh, PGX, which is quite an advanced um, Postgres uh, library, um, but it has like a, a, a wrapper standard lib um, library that gives it uh, compatibility with the standard SQL driver as such. So I did that last night, um, very late last night, <laughs> in bed in my laptop. So I need to go get that. Um, I have pushed it up as a separate branch um, and I should be able to um, fetch um, and then merge that in. And because I'm using Goland, uh, it should do an automatic stash and rebase on top. So let's, um, Let's see what happens. Uh, so I'm now going to go merge. Oh, why is it not giving me options there? Oh, yeah, because it's a different. Um... Yeah, OK. I'll probably need to the best. Yeah, probably the best that I actually merge it into develop and then merge it in here. Yeah, let's do that. OK, so let's stash what we've got here. Uh, SQL mock login. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to go back to the develop. Um, and then I'm just going to merge in. Let's do a compare so you can see what's what. Oh, did it? Hold on a minute. Sorry, it's too late now. <laughs> I just realized it was going to do the right thing. Oh, no mind. I should probably do it this way anyway. Okay, so. So this is what's changed. Um, on the left, you can see what's in the uh, incoming. So we've got um, a database SQLs coming in, and we're gonna um, in the what's this? This is the API. It's just a bit of a clean up. It's just going back to standard database SQL, um, and then I 
because I'm switching um, to the standard SQL driver uh, as such, uh, not driver, library. Um, I need to update, I needed to update the query and the um, exec calls and stuff because they don't, they don't take a context uh, like the more sort of thread based pool stuff does. Um, so there's lots of this taking out the background context stuff here. And then transactions obviously changing from being PGX transaction to an SQL transaction. And I'm passing in a reference to that as well now, instead of doing it by value, uh, because it's not based on uh, a thread thing. So that just all looks good. Um, and then in my oh, ghost sum, I don't really want to worry about. And then in the main uh, context goes away for some reason. Um, but we're bringing in the database SQL um, and we are setting up the database as a, um, we basically have to keep a reference to the PGX standard lib. Um, and that's why I've got that little underscore um, in front there, because you're not actually directly relate um, using that. You're using a PGX um, string to tell um, the database um, open function. You'll see that in a sec. Um, what library to use, um, or driver rather. Now we're, now we're talking about a driver. But it's not referenced anywhere else. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so if I don't put that underscore there, um, every time I kind of optimize my code, if I reformat it, it just um, optimizes away that reference to the um, PGX v4 standard lib, which I don't want. So I have to put the underscore in front to tell them um, to tell the clean up things that I am using it. You just don't know it. Um, so yeah, so we're switching from PGX pool to SQL DB. Um, and in the open, we're passing in PGX now um, as a driver. And we're not obviously using a context and we're not using connect. We're basically just opening the database um, and then deferring on a close. Um, and then we're passing that in and that's it really. And then I think it's, uh, that's yeah, that's all we've got. So that looks good. So let's merge that in. And uh, we will do quickly on the clean there. Let's see what happens now. That's good, I think. Maybe I should do a, um, actually I should do a go get, no, I'm surprised that worked there. Did I add anything to go mod? Oh, well, we'll see. Um, so make test. This is without the database stuff at the moment. Okay, let's do a quick deploy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hello. That's new. Probably been using pip. I 
Everything's changed. What's going on? Interesting. I wonder, I think there was a release of uh, Charmcraft. I wonder if that's caused a problem. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if I can just switch back for a bit because that looks a bit problematic. Basically, great, so that might have just like cause problems there. I wonder if um wonder why that's happening. <sighs> I like snaps, but that's that's gonna be a problem if it's gonna cause a bug like that straight away. I know it's beta and everything, but damn it. Okay. Mm. There's a little roadblocks that always put into your workflow when you're working on edge technology, should we say. What we're going to do here, we are going to Mm. 
maybe I can just move that for a moment. Let's see what that does. Well, that looks like it might work. I'll give that a go because I can't... I'm presuming they've got... Either I need to reboot, which is not going to happen while I'm recording the stuff. Um, and it's not critical to my work day to get Charmcraft. So I'm just going to revert that and see if that fixes things up. And then... Uh, Go ahead and check the forms later and see what's going on. Okay. Let's give that a go then. So think yeah I should be able to just do John Croft build don't make cream I'm we'll just do make now it works okay where to ho let's see what happens going to do um, another make clean all just for funsies and then uh, make upgrade hmm right Let's see if that's deployed okay So that did finish, didn't it? Yeah. That's still there. Make sure the driver actually works. Quick refresh, it's still there. Goals are still there. That's good. All right, so it works. Even though Charmcraft tried to sabotage me. Right then, so I'll get rid of some of these in my develop. Uh, that's where we spend a lot of time, so that's good. We'll keep that for the moment. Right, so I will push that off for the moment because that's good stuff. Let it do its build and test. Um, and now I will switch back to API tests. And merge back in, develop. So we're now using PGX, that's good. And so we're basically in line. Okay. We're good for testing. And 
let's unstash my changes. Okay. And instantly we don't have any problems there, look. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> That's all good there. Right, so where were we? So I fix right, so I've now fixed up all the database driver stuff and that's all working. Um, and now I just want to test the SQL mock uh, testing suite um, as such. Um, so what we're going to do, we have, we are initializing is, which is a little mini testing framework as such. We're getting a new mock, which provides um, a database and a mock library check we don't have any problems to further close and we're setting up a config which we need globally for the api to use um instantiate a service do the things register them all we're pretending we've got a couple of rows in the members table. We expect a query when we do the service and then we expect a good response and a token string that we haven't actually sorted out yet. Okay, so we know this is going to fail here, um, but we just want to see whether it actually kind of runs. So, yeah, it should fail here at line 70 because we haven't done the token stuff yet, which we need. Um, because when we do a login, we pass in the password, it has a yeah, yeah, good, creates a token record, and then returns the new token to be used for subsequent API requests. So that should fail. Um, but let's give it a quick go, make sure. Yeah. Blah blah. Okay, that's fine. All right, I see now. And if I do a go test minus V, yeah. Yeah, we've got a 500 to her back. Okay. Yep, yeah, I think that's fine. So what we've got to do now is we've got to expect an insert
And then we're going to have to do something interesting there about the token stuff. Because we won't know the token, but we're going to fake a token later. Mm, okay. We will get to that. Okay, so. How do we do? How do we do? Um, an insert. Let's do, uh, let's go back to. Scrum lock here. Three. Expect exact, and then now we'll return result. Am I doing a return result? Probably not. Where's the uh Expect a query. That's a good point actually. What am I doing there? Um Yeah, it doesn't return a result. Hmm, okay. Spect exec insert. tokens what if I can just do that can I do that Does 
does it need to be handled? Because I don't actually care. Well, I can't get, unless I change the query, I can't get the token back. I'm going to have to fake that at some point here. I wonder if that will work. Give it a go. Must return a database result. Okay. Uh, insert into tokens. What is it doing then? So if I do, it's already passing, it is passing a string. Ah, so I can. Oh, yeah, 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 I already know the string. I'm going to expect it. And I can pass in the date. All right. Okay. Um, what date format do I want? Let's just take that little bit of code. It's a bit sneaky, but we'll do it. Um, and we're going to use that as our token date. Let's do that up here. We're going to call this. I keep putting a C in. Why do I keep doing that? Token date equals time, blah, 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 blah. Format time dot RFC. should do. It's not being used yet, so that's probably why it's complaining. Yep. With args. Okay, we'll just hard code for the moment, but here we go. These things are going to be extracted later because I'm going to reuse them through tests as my test user. We've got a member. We've got a token. That we expect to be 
inserted. And a token date. Doesn't like that, does it? That's weird how he does that. Right, and no, that's not what I asked for. Uh, we'll return result. What kind of result do we do then? Oh, this is where I knew I was going to have issues. Because <laughs> I don't have an auto-generated integer 64. I have a UUID. In theory. Alright, so I don't want that. This is my second blocker that I'm not sure how to get around. Oh, maybe I need to do this as, um, yeah, I need to do this as a query, expected query. I wonder if that, well, Oh no, it's not doing a re Oh, okay. I wonder if I can do that then, so... A new error or something? Interesting. That's annoying. How can I get around that? Can I just do a null? I'm 
pain in the butt. Let's have a look. Type result. Can I do a different type? Expected exact. Not set to expectation. Hmm. New result, new variable result. Okay, let's try Yeah, let's try Faking a nail. Does like that. Okay. Ooh, okay. We might get away with that. Be 
because in the API, yeah, we're just throwing away nil. Although, oh, but actually, I'd be interested to see what comes back because it might give me, yeah, it might give me a pretend result. Okay, we'll see because it's probably going to return number of affected rows, but something as an integer, which. Maybe I just fake that as one because it's just not important. Maybe it's like a, a row, row ID rather than the actual primary key. Maybe I've got it all wrong. Maybe it's just a row ID, but oh, okay. Let's run that and we'll see. The documentation's not great. That. It's to take a deal with it. I give it one expected string. actual string oh, ah yeah, yeah okay good point oh that's where this there's like a any arg type thing, isn't there? Okay, I wonder if that'll work then. With args. Take that out. And oh, the token date's going to be wrong as well. Interesting setup there. Yeah, it's too dynamic, you see, that's the issue. Because I'm calculating things on the fly. I can't know what the function is going to do because it's it's using the time basically for both of those things um to generate a unique a unique token and obviously time is dependent on you know that is like when is this token going to expire and it's like 60 days from when it's generated at the moment so that's you know every time you run you get a different value so i can't actually predict it because the function underneath is going to change it, what it's going to insert into the database. So you kind of have to so that's gone. Let's just come out for a second. Let's see if that passes. Nope. 
Ah, all right, so we've got to where we want to be now. That's good, okay. So I'm expecting a token to come back, which I have no idea how to predict. So that's, yeah, that's good. We're getting there. So all the database stuff has passed. We now need to work out how to test the result to just the string, I guess. Um, I guess I can do some sort of query. On the values there. Uh, let's do um Now I'm going to dive into go string functionality. So it is true. Um, body dot what is the body then? Yeah, so I definitely want to convert that to a string. And then can I do how do you do string like contains in Go then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contains. That'll do. Uh, string, substring. Oh, yeah, so it's an actual function. It's not. Not be on the thing. Okay, that's fine. All right. Quick and dirty, then we will do because we're running out of time, I think, aren't we? Yep. See if we can just get this one login passing. Uh, so we'll do. See what happens in a sec. I'm going to, have to nope. Is that not? How do I? Strings. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. So we want two things to test. We want to make sure that we have the full member ID that we know it should contain. Thingy. 
And then the second one is to make sure it has at least that because that at least implies that it is actually a string rather than like an integer or something like that. Okay. Oops. Finish that off. Finish that off. Don't know the token. Good that. It says. Okay, we'll try that. Yay! Okay. We are there. And if we screw things up, so if the token. If we take that out, we didn't like that, did it? Huh. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Let's do that out and we'll just make that underscore for funsies oh actually yeah I'll do that okay so that's a quick that should break things oh why not Why is that still passing? That should that should be failing. Just like if I it 
if I Well, that should change. I mean, if I, even if I just take off that one thing there, that should fail too. No, it fails. Oh, it's going to be an empty token string if I don't pass in. So that, yeah, that's why. It will fulfill it. So that test is working. It's just it will be an empty token. Hmm. Uh, do what now? Okay, well, I'm kind of running out of time, but that's that is working and it is doing the right thing. So we are testing the in the database access. And we are testing that the right shape is coming back and the member ID value is correct. Um, the only thing there is that if I don't for some reason get a token, I haven't yet got a way of testing that. Um, I might be able to test that just with like a quick length check or something on uh, check or maybe there's a regex type thing so I can then um, it's not gonna have that hmm anyway there we go. So I am going to say that that is good for the time being. We just can't predict the token and we'll just have to fake tokens later. So let's commit that. Uh, and test of login right. Done. Right. Time to go to the day job. So um, until next time, uh, take care. Bye.